Hey guys, just want to come on and share a little bit more out of uh, Lewis Berry Chaper's Satan, His Motives and Methods. It's really got me because, you know, this book was written a long time ago and at least 70 something years ago, because he died in 1950 something. So it's probably older than that. But it's so spot on about what's going on today with this. You know, there's a false modern version of truth and morality out there. And this is what Satan does, because he's very religious. And I just want to read a couple pages from this, because it's just really interesting. Uh, let's see, I'm going to start with... All right, I'm going to start here. So the believer is also the object of the satanic attack because of the fact that unto the child of God is committed the great ministry of reconciliation, that by his testimony both in life and word and by his prayers the fact of redemption may be given to the world. If Satan can cripple the believer's service, he accomplishes much in resisting the present purpose of God. No other explanation is adequate for the dark pages of church history, the appalling failure of the church in worldwide evangelism, or her present sectarian divisions and selfish indifference. The blighting satanic opposition may be detected in every effort for the salvation of the lost, may be seen in the fact that no personal appeal is ever made to the vast majority, even in this favored land. Moreover, when an appeal is made, it is easily distracted or diverted into the discussion of unimportant themes. You know, when you feel that kind of awkwardness when you're trying to share the gospel with someone or the truth about the Lord or scripture, you can cut it with a knife. The, the air is thick with controversy and questions and doubting. And, you know, I believe that's the prince of the power of the air when you feel that stuff. Um, the faithful pastor or evangelist is most sh uh, surely assailed every device of Satan being used to distort the one all-important message of grace into something which is not vital. The evangelist's call for decisions is often cumbered with that which is misleading or is a positive misstatement of the terms of salvation. Thus, the appeal is lost and the whole effort fails. The action of Satan may also be detected in the fact that a humble messenger who is loyal to Christ and his salvation by grace alone will be almost unheeded at this present time while the vast throng will be found supporting that which is religious only in its externals, but which is in reality a gospel of morality and is a subtle denial of the redemption that is in Christ. I mean, if that's not the truth going on right now, I don't know what is. All the legalistic churches, all the stuff going on that we see with the Lordship and all of it, it's amazing. And this was written probably in the you know 30s, 40s, 1930s or 40s. Um, Okay, so, yeah, I'm going to read that sentence again, because that's powerful. The action of Satan may also be detected in the fact that a humble messenger who is loyal to Christ and his salvation by grace alone will be almost unheeded at the present time, while the vast throng will be found supporting that which is religious only in its externals, but which is in reality a gospel of morality and is a subtle denial of the redemption that is in Christ. Man, that's just so spot on accurate. It was happening then and it's happening now even more so. Because Satan is going to come, he wants to be like the Most High, right? That's what he says in the in the five I wills. Um, again, the opposing power of Satan may be seen in the matter of Christian giving. Millions are given without solicitation for education, culture, and humanity's physical comfort. But real worldwide evangelism must ever drag on with its shameful limitation and depths. This warfare of Satan is even more noticeable in the believer's prayer life. This being his place of greatest usefulness and power, it's subject to the severest conflict. In this connection, it may be stated safely that there is comparatively but little prevailing prayer today, yet the way is open and the promises are sure. If the believer cannot be beguiled into indifference or a denial of Christ, he is often tempted to a place, I'm sorry, he is often tempted to place an undue emphasis upon some minor truth and impartial blindness to sacrifice his whole influence for good through the apparent unbalance of his testimony. Some people go off on the Sabbath, or they go off on hyper-dispensationalism, or deliverance. They go off on these tangents and they get lost. They get caught in the weeds, and they fall out of sound doctrine. 
That's why I read the King James Bible, because it presents clear doctrine. The modern versions have produced a lot of confusion. Uh, let's see. Satan's warfare against the purpose of God is still more evident in his direct hindering of the unsaved. Not only are they constantly blinded to the gospel, but when the spirit would draw them, their minds are often filled with strange fears and distorted visions because they're polluted with the religion of the world. Because it's so hypocritical, it's insane. Their inability to cast themselves upon Christ is a mystery to themselves, and nothing but the direct illuminating power of the Spirit in conviction can open their eyes and deliver them from their gross darkness. All right, because Satan comes as a minister of righteousness, an angel of light. He transforms himself and his ministers, who are so duped that they think they're presenting the truth when they're preaching false doctrine and false gospels. It's amazing. And, you know, God said he's going to send a strong delusion. Well, that's part of the delusion, this thinking that you're in the truth when you're not. And Satan will use that to his advantage. I mean, like I said before, if Satan tempted the Lord with Scripture and used it on him, you know he's going to use it on people. And the Bible is the most contextual book there ever is, was, or will be. And it's very easy for people to mishandle the Word of God deceitfully, as Paul talks about. Uh, Satan has always adapted his methods to the times and conditions. If attention had been gained, a complete denial of the truth has been made. Or when some recognition of the truth is demanded, it has been granted on the condition that that which is vital in redemption should be omitted, i.e. the grace of God, salvation is a free gift, believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, put your trust in him as your Savior, and you're saved forever. Religion doesn't teach that. This partial recognition of the truth is required by the world today. For while the direct result of the believer's testimony to the satanic system has been toward the gathering out of the bride, there has been an indirect influence of this testimony upon the world, which has led them to see that all that is good in their own ideals has been already stated in the Bible and exemplified in the life of Jesus. Moreover, they have heard that every principle of, the, of humanitarian sympathy or righteous government has been revealed in the scriptures of truth. Thus, there has grown a more or less popular appreciation of the value of these moral precepts of the scriptures and of the example of Christ. This condition has prevailed to such a degree that any new system or doctrine which secures a hearing today must base its claim upon the Bible and include, to some extent, the person and teaching of Jesus. The fact that the world has thus partly acknowledged the value of the scriptures is taken by many to be a glorious victory for God. While on the contrary, fallen humanity is less inclined to accept God's terms of salvation than in the generations past. And he was saying that this 75, 80 years ago. It is evident that this partial concession of the world to the testimony of God has opened the way for counterfeit systems of truth, which, according to prophecy, are the last and most dreaded methods in the satanic warfare. In this connection, it must be conceded that Satan has really granted nothing from his own position, even though he be forced to acknowledge every principle of truth, save that upon which salvation depends. He'll fill you up with religion, but you'll be missing the gospel and true salvation. He'll give you religion, and it looks good. Rather is he advantaged by such a concession, for the value and delusion of a counterfeit is increased by the nearness of its likeness to the real. By advocating much truth, in the form of a counterfeit system of truth, Satan can satisfy all the external religious cravings of the world and yet accomplish his own end by withholding that on which man's only hope depends, which is the gospel of grace, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. It is therefore no longer safe to subscribe blindly to that which promises general good, simply because it is good and is garnished with the teachings of the Bible. For good has ceased to be all on one side and evil all on the other, right? Because it's a mixed bag out there. We ate that apple and from there on, we're all skewed. In fact, that which is evil in purpose has gradually appropriated the good until but one issue distinguishes them. Part truthism has come into final conflict with whole truthism and woe to the soul that does not discern between the two. The first, though externally religious, is of Satan and leaves its followers in the doom of everlasting banishment from the presence of God, while the latter is of God, having promised for the life that now is and that which is to come. It is also noticeable that the term infidel has, within a generation, disappeared from common usage. 
and that manner of open denial of the truth has been almost wholly abandoned. Yet the real church has by no means lost her foes, for they are now even more numerous, subtle and terrible than ever before. These present enemies, however, like the unclean birds in the mustard tree, have taken shelter under her branches. They are officiating at her most sacred altars and conducting her institutions, you know, like the prophets of Baal. And what Israel went after, when God told them, don't sacrifice to other gods, don't act like the nations that I'm going to, the land I'm going to give you. Don't act like them, don't do what they do. But that's what happened. It was, a, it was a counterfeit religious system. And that's what we see happening today. It's been happening for a while. Um, so he says, yeah, they are fishing at her most sac sacred altars and conducting her institutions. The Bible seminaries are full with New Age thought and all this um, New Age Bible criticism. These vultures are fed by a multitude, both in the church and out, who, in satanic blindness, are committed to the furtherance of any project or the acceptance of any theory that promises good to the world, right, the social gospel, or is apparently based upon scripture, little realizing that they are often really supporting the enemy of God. A lot of the cults have a lot of truth, but they fail on some major Bible doctrine that are imperatives. A counterfeit is Satan's most natural method of resisting the purpose of God, since by it he can realize to that extent his desire to be like the Most High, which he said is quoted about him in Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah or Ezekiel. Every material is now at hand, as never before, for the setting up of those conditions which are predicted to appear only in the very end of the age. So he's saying this 75 years ago. Think about it now. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5, one of these predictions may be found. This also know, that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. That rings a bell with the whole woke movement right now. There's like this new morality coming into town. Every word of this prophecy is worth worthy of most careful study in the light of the present tendency of society. The fifth verse is especially important in connection with the subject of counterfeits of the truth, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Here it is stated that in these last days, forms of godliness shall appear, which, however, deny the power of God, meaning they can't save you. And from such, the believer is warned to turn away. The important element in the true faith, which is to be omitted in these forms, is carefully defined elsewhere in the scriptures. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greeks. See that? The word power is there, you know? But denying the power thereof, the power is in the gospel to save. We preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called, both Jew and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Therefore, that which is omitted so carefully from these forms is the salvation which is in Christ. This is most suggestive, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And it is by salvation alone that any deliverance can be had from the power of darkness. Without the salvation, Satan can still claim all his own. It is perhaps necessary to add that, judging from all his writings, this salvation of which Paul confesses he was not ashamed was no less an undertaking than regeneration by the Spirit. And whatever other theories may be advanced, this is the teaching of the Spirit through the Apostle Paul. This prophecy concerning conditions in the last days ends with an injunction which is addressed only to the believers who are called upon to live and witness during those days. I mean, it's we're like on top of that right now, it, seems, it feels like. I mean, the Lord could tarry, but man, the everything's aligning. Uh, to them it is said, from such forms of godliness, which deny the power thereof, turn away. As certainly as the last days are now present, okay, Lewis Berry Schaefer saying this like 75 years ago. So certainly this injunction is now to be heeded and the Lord's people are called upon to separate from churches and institutions which deny the gospel of God's saving grace 
through the substitutionary blood redemption of the cross to support institutions or ministries which deny the power thereof is to lend aid to Satan, the enemy of God. You know, John says, if they don't come with this doctrine, don't bid them Godspeed and welcome them into your home. That might sound harsh, but that's doctrine is so important to the Lord. And that's why people connect because usually people of the same doctrine and walk connect together. And the remnant church is out there and there's a lot of believers out there, but they're not all in churches. There are some good churches out there still. And there's a lot of saved believers out there, but there's a lot of, we're like an unseen church, an invisible church kind of. It's really interesting. Um, if therefore, I'm sorry, it therefore follows that one feature of the last days will be a form of godliness, which carefully denies the power of God and salvation. I mean, that, you see that with the Lordship stuff and, and the cults, and you see it in Deliverance and Hebrew Roots, and they're reading Hebrew, and they're wearing Zit seats, and they're Bible, 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 but they are missing the gospel. It's amazing. Again, Satan is in the latter times to be the promoter of a system of truth or doctrine. Okay, check this out. First Timothy 4, 1 and 2. Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. So these false teachings are coming from demons and Satan, right? Because Satan's a master at scripture. He knows how to skew the word of God. He's a master. It's the first thing he said to men and women, you know? He was questioning them and questioning God's word. Has God said these predicted satanic systems are here, carefully described. Their offers will be so attractive and externally so religious that into them will be drawn some who shall depart from the faith. They being enticed by seducing spirits. These attractive systems are not only from Satan, but are themselves lies and hypocrisy, being presented by those whose conscience has been seared with a hot iron. Their false teaching has them seared. Now, there can be saved believers that fall into false teaching, a lot of times people aren't even saved. And those are the ones the Lord's going to say, I never knew you. They were super religious doing this, that, and the other thing, but it was all their flesh and it was of Satan. No more illuminating terms could be used than these. A lie covered by hypocrisy means evidently that they are still attempting to be counted among the faithful. And the conscience seared would indicate that they can distort the testimony of God and blindly point other souls to the bottomless pit without present remorse or regret because they think they're doing them good. They're blind guides. The doctrine of devils is again referred to in Revelation 2.24 as the deep things of Satan. It's about his doctrine. And this is Satan's counterfeit of the deep things of God, which is the spirit reveals to them that love him. 1 Corinthians 2.10. Thus they are predicted for the last days of this age, both a form of godliness, which denies the power of salvation that is in Christ, and a system known as the deep things of Satan, or doctrines of devils speaking lies and hypocrisy. Can there be any doubt that these two scriptures describe the same thing, since they also refer to the same time? The lies of one can be put, can be but the covered denial of salvation in the other. Again, Satan has his assembly or congregation meeting, which is his counterfeit of the visible church. This assembly is referred to in Revelation 2.9 and 3.9 as the synagogue of Satan. An organized assembly being relatively as important for the testimony of the deep things of Satan as it has been in the things of God. In Matthew 13, the tares, the tares appear among the wheat, and their appearance is said to be after the sowing of the wheat. So also the children of the wicked one appear and are often included and even organized within the forms of the visible church. And they said, false teachers will come around you. Jude and Peter said that, and they're without the spirit. The assembly of Satan calling itself a part of the visible church is to have its ministers and teachers. This is stated in 2 Corinthians. I read this before. That's where I picked up from the other part that I read. Uh, this book, guys, is so spot on and accurate. It's describing what's happening today and what's scripture. I mean, it's just he's just looking at scripture and back then he could see it happening. How much more now? So, you know, I'm not a date setter and... I don't know when the Lord's going to come, but the rapture could happen at any moment. That's just good Bible doctrine. And the Lord could tarry also. But, you know, keep your eyes on Israel. When you see a temple being built, things are speeding up. And, you know, 
everything's upside down. So there's a big shift. There's been a huge shift since, since this whole COVID thing. And it's just really interesting. It's both exciting and it's fearful to see so much going on. I'm not afraid, but it's a fearful thing to see what's coming because the tribulation is coming. And if people aren't saved, they're going to have to go through that. And if they get saved, they're more than likely to die for their faith. Um, but that could happen at any time to any of us. We could see more persecution here. You know, we're, we're starting to see a harder form of persecution now, but it is what it is. Uh, the Lord said that's going to happen. So, you know, I just encourage us to continue to preach the gospel, pray for each other. If you guys have prayer requests, put them in the comments. Prayer is powerful, guys. It's real because God's our father. He hears everything. He knows it all. He, and he's interested in us, you know. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to come on and share that. The book is really good, guys. I highly recommend it. Anything from Lewis Berry Chafer is good. His book, Grace, is fantastic. It is such a good read on what grace really is and really understanding it. Um, it, it just helps because you can sense he had the Holy Spirit in his writing. You know, you could, I'm not saying his writing's infallible. He's a human. He had issues like we all do. You know, he's not perfect, uh, but he was a sound Bible teacher and very interesting. So anyway, sorry my video is a little long, but I wanted to share that because I think it's worth sharing. You know, we're in a massive spiritual battle with all this stuff going on right now. So remember, you're not fighting against flesh and blood. And that's who we have to deal with every day, you know. But behind that, there is Satan and his devils, <laughs> his fallen angels, you know, demons. Call them what you want, but they're real. So anyway, yeah, it's just an exciting time, guys. And uh, I think that's all I wanted to share. I hope you guys have a good night, and we'll talk to you soon. God bless.